All right, so now we are gonna make my uh, very much liked mashed baked potatoes. So it's an easy way to do mashed potatoes for a crowd um, that you don't have to like do on the stove at the last minute to make sure that they're warm or hot. Uh, you can prep them, put them in a baking dish and then bake them off and then just pull them out of the oven uh, bring them right to the table when you're ready to serve and you've got great uh, mashed potatoes with a nice crust on the outside that's really, really flavorful. So I've already um, boiled the potatoes. I use Yukon Gold. I just um, peel them and cut them into quarters. And then eh, they take, you boil them for about a half an hour or so. You can test them with a fork and make sure they're done. Just drain them off. And, uh, and put them into a strainer, you know, they'll be hot. And then what I do is I use a potato ricer. Now, I don't know if everybody has a potato ricer. If you don't, it's a great thing to add to your kitchen. They're inexpensive and they make really good, consistent and easy mashed potatoes rather than, you know, standing there with a masher using your uh, upper body strength to get them <laughs> all mashed. Um, but basically you just put them into the ricer and then you squeeze the handle and you can see they come out. This is also great for making potatoes uh, when you want to make gnocchi too, which I guess we can get to another time. Um, but they'll come through the little strainer, right? And that's about it because I, I did most of the potatoes ahead of time, but I just wanted to do uh, a couple batches for you to see how, how they come through the ricer. Um, but that's it. So now you have potatoes in the same pot that you uh, boiled them in. Let's move this out of the way. And you have really great and fluffy, right, potatoes. So into this, they're still hot. You're going to put some butter. Um, I would say this is two and a half pounds of potatoes. So I would say maybe three quarters of a stick of butter. It's up to you on the butter, how you like your mashed potatoes. Um, but you get your butter in there. And some milk. Now I had put a little milk on the bottom of the pan um, so that the potatoes would not stick before I rice them. Um, this is again whole milk. You can use any kind of milk you have and also if you want to and you don't want to use milk, you could use a little bit of the potato water to give them consistency as well or a combination of both. Um, once you put the liquid in, you cannot take it out so be careful and just add and then mix, right? and see if you like the consistency of the potatoes as you go. Um, so good mashed potato, you know, once, once you start mixing these, the rice potatoes turn instantly into a nice smooth mashed potato and you don't have to mash, you just have to rice. Um, the other thing I like to add is some sour cream, right? I use low fat sour cream, I would put in a good two heaping tablespoons full. I like the tanginess that a um, sour cream gives to mashed potatoes. If you do not like sour cream, you don't have to put it. If you rather use creme fraiche, um, you could do that. You could even, I, I would say you could even use some whipped cream cheese in here if you want for some flavor. At this point, if you like, you can put some shredded cheese of your choice in here to make it really special. Don't overdo it. You know, maybe a quarter cup, half cup of cheese um, is fine. I think I'll just finish this milk off. Get that in there. And that should be that. So again, you see I'm making these potatoes without a lot of effort in terms of getting them mashed. Um, they just are working really well and you can see the consistency of those potatoes is perfect. Now, time to add a little bit of pepper. I 
boil the potatoes in salted water, right? So I'm not gonna add any salt at all until I taste them and see if it needs it. Baked potato, uh, mashed potatoes are something that you can over salt really easily. Um, you could boil them in water that was not salted um, so that you don't have that problem. And then when they're, when they're mashed, you can taste them and um, determine how much salt you want to add at that point. And that may be less risk. So, but we'll taste. Mm, those are good. I would say just a tiny bit of salt, like the tiniest sprinkle. Again, if you um, people want to add more salt at the table or more butter at the table, I think the uh, consistency of these is good and the amount of butter, um, sour cream and milk is perfect. Okay, so next step, I take the mashed potatoes and I'm gonna turn them out into this gratin dish. Um, two and a half pounds um, of potatoes will give us a lot of surface area in this dish, um, which is what you want because you want that crust. You could probably get five pounds of potatoes in this same dish. Uh, if you get a whole bag of five pounds and you'd have just a lot more potatoes and the dish would be a lot fuller. You can certainly use a smaller baking dish if you wanted. Um, and, but again, you'll have less surface area of the mashed potato. Um, so you'll have less of that good, delicious crust. So I like to use a little bigger pan and get them out into the pan. Always have your tools. You know, it's in my kitchen. I've got my tools all by the stove here. So always have ready everything you need. Makes life a lot easier in the kitchen. Um, so we get all the potatoes out of the pot. Okay. And all we need to do is now smooth these out. In the meantime, uh, we're going to do these in a 350 degree oven, um, probably for about 30 minutes, 45 minutes. I'd say 45 minutes would be good. Um, or until the tops of these potatoes start to become or do become golden brown. And, uh, Sometimes you can put them in, the great thing is you can put them in, say you're doing a roast, uh, and you've got the roast on one um, shelf in the oven, and you want to do the potatoes at the same time. If you're doing both things at 350 degrees, um, you're in good shape. Just pop those potatoes in. If you're not ready to do the potatoes immediately, you can leave them at room temperature for an hour or so, or you can put them in the fridge leave them in the fridge until you're ready to bake them off and then take them out. If you do that, the potatoes will be cold and you'll have to bake them longer. So you wanna get those potatoes uh, up to room temp. And then I would say, you know, go with your 45 minutes. If they're cold, you might need to leave them in for more like an hour. Also, if they're deeper, if you do decide to do the five pounds um, and there's more potato in the pan, uh, you will also have to bake them uh, longer to make sure that all the potatoes in, you know, inside the pan are, are nice and warm, are nice and hot. So once you get them all in there, then the next trick is you take a fork, and you can see here, nice and flat and soft and even. Um, I take a fork and I run the fork with the tines across the top of the potatoes. Now, the reason I do this is A, because it makes them look nice, but B, um, because it makes some nice crags, nooks and crannies, crags, um, for butter to sit and accumulate and get golden brown. And I'm also, we're gonna put some cheese on here as well. And so these ridges that I put into the potatoes hold all those toppings really nicely. So here I have some Parmesan cheese, it's grated and 
just simply kind of sprinkle that on top of the potatoes. And a couple tablespoons. This is to your liking as well. Um, if you don't want to put Parmesan cheese on the top of these, you certainly do not have to. They'll be just as good without it. But the, the cheese on top helps it get crusty and delicious when it's baking off and a little bit more golden brown too. All right, so there's the cheese. And then I just take little pats of butter, like, you know, little pieces of butter and I dot them on top. No special way, just space them out. Uh, I would say this is probably about three tablespoons of butter and I cut the tablespoons into quarters and just lay them out across the top and they are gonna melt and they're gonna combine with the cheese and they're gonna be delicious. Um, so that's the prep on the potatoes, simple and easy. Put them in the oven, let them bake off. Um, I'll show you what they look like and, uh, and they'll be delicious. So Sandy's baked mashed potatoes, a great, great recipe to make life easy in the kitchen. All right, so here are the mashed baked potatoes fresh out of the oven. When I told you crusty and golden, I wasn't kidding. Look how gorgeous that looks. That baked about, what, about 50 minutes or so at 350? And then I put it in the broiler a little bit to finish it off. So let me just cut into it and show you what that looks like. Very cool and delicious.